Hi, it's Kutsky here, back again with a new toy. This time I've just been sent my Chaosolator Pro. You may have heard of the Chaosolator that's been around for a little while. It's a tiny little box that you can take around to your gigs with you and it basically generates sound, it's a synthesizer. I always found it was a little bit lacking in features and a little bit fiddly to use, so it was nothing that you could ever really use in a professional capacity. So hopefully with this new unit, they've kind of upgraded it, as you can see, it's in the same box as the Chaos Pad, so it's really kind of tough and robust, and they've added their missing features to it. I've only had it out of the box for about an hour yet, and I had a quick play around with it, and I'm really liking it. It's taken a little bit to get to grips with, as there's a much more of a musical aspect to it rather than just using the effects. But I'm going to give you a little rundown now of what I've picked up on it so far. Right, so I'm just going to run through some of the basic functions of the uh, Chaosolator. Uh, basically, you get about 200 preset sounds in there, which you can um, store for quick use in any of these hot banks up the top. The presets are pretty good to be fair, they cover just about every type of music and you get everything from live instruments to synthesised leads, you've got drum loops in there, bass lines and then even one hit samples so you can use it as if it was like an MPC sampler. So just go through some of them that I've had a um, quick play with and found that quite like. Uh, there's this nice acid sound that I found. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, there's big leads in there, I like this one. As you can see, kind of on the X, Y axis, as you're moving across, this is moving up and down your scale of keys, whereas up and down is um, filtering it, so you can hear. And obviously the nature of this type of thing, it's quite hard to play the same sort of riff in over and over again, but it's got the option where you can apply a key and a scale to the pad, so even if you're not going to get the same notes all the time, you know it's going to be in the same key, which is uh, quite a cool little feature for it, really. Some old school jungle bass line stuff going on. That's why I was saying some of the kits that are there individually, so you can play it back in as if it was a sampler, play your own little drum patterns in. Pretty cool there. So they're all your kind of fills and sweeps that you can do. That's a demonstration of the vocoder on it, which you can actually use with a microphone as well, which is pretty cool. And then uh, lastly, it's the full drum loops, which was something that I was um, talking about at the start, where you can basically play in a full drum loop, and with this, the higher up the scale you go, the more hits are in the loop, and then the lower down it's more sparse, and then the up and down's the filter, so you can get different effects. And the other thing that I've been having to play around with and getting some mixed results is the gate arpeggiator on it. So the concept of this is instead of having to keep hitting the pad over and over again to get it, you can hold it and this will re-trigger the notes or gate it um, according to what the setting on the back of it is. I had some mixed results so far, so we'll give it a go now. <laughs> And you can use this with leads as well, which is supposed to kind of get your musical timing exactly spot on, but again, mixed results so far. So that's the basic functions. Right, so the next feature they've been selling quite heavily is uh, the loop banks that you can record to at the bottom, which are pretty cool. The idea of these is uh, you can set them for however long you want them to record for, so one beat, one bar, four bars, whatever length you want, and then you can basically play in the drums or play in your leads and patterns, and this will then store them to the um, hot banks at the bottom and then you can bring them in and out as you want in your performance. And then you can almost build up your own track like a four track multi-tracker like people used to use back in the day which is pretty pretty good fun actually. So I'm um, just going to give you a little demonstration at first. We'll start off with putting in a drum loop so we know what we're going to be playing music over the top of. 
so that one will do. So you hit record, choose the channel you want, and then just literally play in the pattern that you're after. So. And that'll now play in forever and a day, and you can just kind of bring that back in whenever you want. So try and get more of a drum and bass vibe going. Let's crank the tempo on it up, so switch it on. And then we'll have a look through and maybe to bring up the kick and snare of that a little bit because obviously sounding pitched up that loop doesn't quite have the same power so we'll try that in over the top of it. So you've always got the freedom to experiment over the top without recording until you hit the record and choose a bank to record onto so we'll just try it first. So I think that'll work, so then we'll do that onto bank C. Not the tightest drumming in the world, but hey. Uh, then we'll go through and maybe stick an acid line over the top of that one. So, where's my acid? <laughs> We'll go with this, then uh, to keep things simple, maybe we'll just not have all the music going, we'll just have the kick and snare playing. And then you can bring any of these in, as I was saying, back over the top. That kick and snare, it's really out of time, that. So to get rid of it, just hit erase loop, choose the one you want to get rid of, and then you can have a go with that again. Not a lot better, but hey, get in there, and then, um... Let's try throwing in the jungle bass line over the top of it. idea of how you can build up a track on it and uh, one of the other cool features is if you hold shift when you hit any of the banks you can change the level of each of the individual hits so if I just get them all going now and then you'll be able to hear you can get your mix right as well So yeah, that's uh, using the loop banks. Final feature which is probably worth mentioning on it is you've got a line in on it so you can use this as part of your DJ setup and you just go in through um, the send and return and then you can obviously take samples of what you're playing. So you could take a drum loop as I did at the bottom, took a drum loop of what I was playing within the K-Oscillator. You can take that loop and save them to any of these banks throughout your DJ set and then do some live remix and production work which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing if you're organised enough, it's got an SD card reader so you can preload all your settings and you can also preload your loops at the bottom so I had to play around taking them in Ableton and then so I knew what would work with what threw them onto the card and they load straight up that seems to work fairly well and you can also use it as a MIDI controller it's going to be a bit expensive if you just want to use it for that I'm sure there's cheaper options on the market but it does the job well everything in here is completely MIDI assignable and you can use it with whatever you want so um, I'm not the most musical person and I'm getting on with it quite well to be honest so I'm sure in the hands of somebody more capable on a tactile musician front, this one's gonna be quite a successful product. So yeah, recommend checking it out.